Flow meters have been around for several hundred years. The turbine flow meter was developed in the late 1700s by a German named Voltmann, and his invention looks a whole lot like modern flow meters. Hi, I'm Walt Boyce, editor of Control and ControlGlobal.com, with another in our series of market intelligence reports. This one is on the usage of flow meters in the process industries. We surveyed our readership and received over 225 responses to our 10-question survey. And as usual, some of the responses were not what we expected. 59% of our respondents described themselves as controls engineers, while another 28% called themselves process engineers, and 12% called themselves either technicians or operators. The respondents were drawn from nearly all of the process industry verticals, including system integrators, and 19% of our respondents came from the chemical industry, 16% from the refining industry, 14% from water wastewater and power utilities, 19% from engineering design firms and those system integrators, and the balance from food, paper, metal, stone, clay, and glass and rubber. There were also about 4% from various pharmaceutical and biotechnology verticals, too. So you can see we had a very representative cross-section of our audience and a decent sample size as well. We asked our respondents how many flow meters they buy or specify each year. 35% said they buy less than 10, 29% said they buy between 10 and 30, and only 5% said they bought between 31 and 50, but a good 14% said they bought 50 or more. 17% of our respondents said they don't buy or specify flow meters regularly at all. So we asked our respondents to take inventory, and differential pressure, magnetic, Coriolis, Orifice plate, turbine meters, and vortex shedding meters came out very much ahead with between 42% and 75% of meters in the plant depending. If you add differential pressure, venturi tube, multiport pitot tube, and orifice plate designs, it's clear that one of the oldest flow technologies is still the clear winner, differential pressure. The lowly turbine meter is still holding its own too, as are the positive displacement and propeller meters. Even rather odd designs like the Kawanda effect meter and the swirl meter are showing up as being used in our respondents' plants. Now here's where it gets interesting. We asked the respondents to tell us which of the technologies they used most, second and third most, or only used occasionally. As you can see, differential pressure, orifice plate, electromagnetic, and Coriolis flow meters lead the pack for most used. There are some changes, though, when the respondents tell us what their second best flow meter is. DP types win handily, while vortex shedding and mag meters follow, with Coriolis meters making a very high showing at over 25%. It's quite likely that the reason this is true is that Coriolis meters are expensive and therefore aren't being used everywhere they could be. Note that positive displacement, turbine, propeller, paddle wheel, and other mechanical devices still have their devotees. As you can see, they do better as the respondent's third choice, and they show up well in the used occasionally column. Thermal dispersion doesn't show up well as a first or second choice, nor does insertion flow meter, but they shine as a used occasionally choice. The interesting category was never use it which is inhabited strongly by the ultrasonic flow meter types, Doppler, transit time, and multipath. Few of our respondents use open channel flow meters, which is understandable since there are usually few in the process industries except the wastewater vertical. Respondents seem to be divided on favorites and never used categories, with technologies like Coriolis getting big returns in both the favorite and in the never used category along with paddle wheels, propeller meters, multiport pitot tubes, swirl meters, and koanda meters. Thermal dispersion meters also score highly in the we-don't-use-them sweepstakes. These results are interesting because they seem to contradict well-known market studies on various types of flow technologies. Now, I am an ISA fellow, and one of my key specializations is flow technologies. My colleague David Spitzer and I have written the Consumer Guide series mostly about flow and level devices. So David and I were curious about what people feel their level of knowledge is about flow meters. 
we ask them to rate the application of flow meters, and we're amazed to discover, after all the really horrible installations that we've seen, that 67% of our respondents thought it was easy to apply flow meters in their plants. Only 16% said they didn't do it often enough for it to become easy. Now, think back to one of our earlier questions where almost 50% bought or specified less than 10 flow meters in a year. Almost 50% rated their knowledge of how to apply flow meters as good, with another 23% saying excellent. Again, this doesn't jive well with Spitzer's and my knowledge of what we actually see out in the plant. We're wondering if some of our respondents are in serious self-deceit or if they just don't want to admit that they don't know how to use flow meters properly. We're wondering that because we asked them how they actually did a flow meter application and over a third said they use the standard device they always use or they call a favorite vendor and do what they tell you. Only 29% of respondents said they worked up each application from first principles, understood what Reynolds number is, and considered the process constraints. No wonder flow meters often don't work. So we asked them to be honest and tell us why they use the flow meters they do. As you can see, about half of the respondents said they use the flow meters they do because they fit the applications better. But 22% said they use what they understand, and 11% says they use what their company tells them to. Now, 4% were really honest and said they used what their best local vendors sell, while 3% said they use what they've got on the shelf, whatever that is. Finally, we asked the big money question. We were fascinated that almost 75% of respondents were happy with their flow meter technologies, while only 1% said they weren't. 23% said they wished there were better flow meter technologies that they could buy, which means there's a market for new and better flow meters. Vendors take note. 2% even said they often do not use a flow meter in applications because they know it won't work. So there you have it. Our readership believes they know how to use flow meters, but maybe they don't. This has been a controlglobal.com marketing intelligence report on flow for the Process Automation Media Network. I'm Walt Boys. Thanks for watching.